record. Hi, good evening and welcome everyone. I'm Tracy Irby, the director at the Center for Women Entrepreneurs. Uh, welcome. We're going to have a we're going to have a great program tonight. Uh, we do have some of our staff online, uh, just so you know who they are. We have Donna Lisa Stinyard. She's our associate director. Barbara Rankes online and on Facebook. She is our program coordinator. And we have Christina Mortel. She's our small business advisor. So for any of you that are visiting us for the first time, uh, the Center for Women Entrepreneurs was funded by the state legislature in 2015 just to promote women entrepreneurs anywhere in the state of Texas. And we do that through small business advising, network and training, grant programs, and, and accelerate her training programs. Uh, we are part of the larger Jane Nelson Institute for Women's Leadership, and they are dedicated to preparing more women to take on successful roles in business and public service. The three specialized centers, the Center for Student Leadership, our center, and the Center for Women in Government, ensure women have the education to establish careers as successful executives, the skills for building entrepreneurial businesses, and the framework needed to run for public office. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and get started. And I can't wait to introduce our speaker for this evening. We have with us Jane McGarry. She hosts the popular lifestyle program, Good Morning Texas, which follows Good Morning America, Monday through Friday on WFAA TV. Jane has interviewed notable Notable people such as President George W. Bush and country music legend Willie Nelson. Through her, through her Jane McGarry Media, Jane uses her nearly 40 years in front of the camera to help women entrepreneurs use media to succeed in business. Jane, we're so happy to have you tonight. Oh, thank you. I am so happy to be here. Really, I'm filled with gratitude that it um, that you've asked me to speak with uh, the ladies and a couple of men, I think, who are on here tonight. And I really appreciate the opportunity. Um, you know, I am I am an entrepreneur also. We were chatting before before the program started. So I, I feel you, okay? I feel, and, and because of that, because I know how hard it is to be an entrepreneur, I've had my media coaching business for the last 10 years, in addition to Good Morning Texas. And so I know how precious your time is. I understand, and I really appreciate you joining the group tonight. And um, hopefully, you'll learn something. Um, I um, I'm I don't know about you. I'm ready for the weekend. Uh, it's a Thursday night. This is a great way to start the weekend. Hopefully, I'm going out to LA for the weekend. I'm going to visit my son. Um, who's been out there for the last four or five years. And, you know, of course, it never rains in Southern California and it's going to rain all weekend. So I will just be spending a lot of nice time with my son. But um, so the thing I wanted to talk to you about tonight, and, and I'm going to tell you, there's going to be uh, throughout the presentation, uh, there will be a QR code. It varies as to where it is on your screen, but that's there if you want to uh, connect with me about anything we're talking about tonight. If you've got questions, if you wanna chat about something, that's what the QR code is for. So feel free to use that. Um, what I wanna to talk to you about is, uh, as I said, I know how hard it is to be in business. I also know how hard it is to market yourself. If nobody knows you're there, how are you gonna sell anything? So I'm gonna to talk to you about what I know and what I've learned about how to boost your sales and build customer relationships with organic video. So I think, you know, we're on the first slide right now. Um, and I'm just going to tell you, it took me a lifetime to build my brand, Jane McGarry. But with your use of organic video and with the way things are today, you can build your brand in months and see results sometimes in weeks. It's just a different world that we're living in. Um, you know, I was looking up some information for this presentation and I thought Kleenex, that's a household word. Look, when do, Kleenex, the first Kleenex was in 1924. It took decades before Kleenex became a household word. Now, think about it, chat GPT. 
it's a household word now. And when did it, I mean, we've known about it for two years. So the world is just going at Zoom pace and communications is just changing so fast. Now with AI, it's gonna change even faster. And I'm gonna tell you what I see working in television every day, working with other people on their social media and doing a lot of research recently about AI. I think we are entering, and that's why I'm going to talk to you about organic video. I think we are entering a time when there is going to be so much information out there and you're not going to know whether it was written by someone or by AI or whatever. I mean, I got, I subscribed to a lot of emails and I got an email the other day from Oprah, from her group. And I looked at it and you know what? I didn't open it because I was like, ah, it's probably written by AI. I believe that we are entering a time when there's going to be such a volume of information out there from everywhere, um, audio, uh, text, even video. Okay. I mean, like y'all probably know like the, uh, the thing where Biden was supposedly calling people and telling people not to go to the polls, but it wasn't actually Biden. It was AI, his voice. And then you've got, I, 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 the other day, somebody sent me a video and it was a Trump bobblehead. Okay. And it was Donald Trump's voice talking about a new bobblehead he had. And I was a little bit suspicious. So I went through to the end of the video and looked at the disclaimer and no, it was some organization doing it, it, it but it was audio that sounded like Donald Trump. I asked like six people, I just for an experiment, I had them look at it. Every one of them thought it was Don. No. Oh my gosh, I can't believe he's got a bobblehead. You know, I mean, every one of them thought it was. So what does this mean for you marketing your business in the middle of all this? I believe it means that the it's a golden opportunity if you take advantage of it. Think about it. The only thing that people are going to know is real is you on camera talking to them. Okay. And you're going to say, well, how do they know that's real? You know, I mean, I guess we could take this to the nth degree, but I was uh, Facebook, Meta, Instagram, some other organizations have said they are going to, they're going to put in detection um, software. And so if it's an AI video or an AI photo, it will have a watermark on it that says AI. So assuming that's true. So here you talking on video, on social media, organic video, and we're going to talk about exactly what that is in a minute. That's going to be one of the few ways that you, that people will connect with a real person. And I think that's going to become gold. I think you on video talking about your brand, talking about your journey is going to become your best sales tool in a way. So that's, um, so we're going to talk about organic video and exactly what it is because organic video is, um, you know, I don't know how many of you are on TikTok, but TikTok has sort of made organic video. And when I say organic video, I mean, Usually it'll be somebody just talking to the camera, just, you know, sitting in their office or sitting in a car somewhere, just talking to the camera. That has become the most effective way to communicate your brand message. Forget all the fancy production and all this kind of stuff and being perfect. Organic video is what I want to talk about. So I think if we can go to the next slide, I want to talk about some of the techniques of getting organic video right. So there we go. Okay. Um, well, actually, let's go to the next slide. There we go. Okay. Let's go. So how do you do organic video? Um, I'm going to give you some things that I have learned through research, some things I've also learned from my clients who, what works for them, and some things that I just know personally work. 
Um, first of all, and by the way, again, we're going to, we're going to do some questions and answers. I'm going to go through a lot of this. And then I know some of it's confusing or you're going to have questions. So at the end, I'm going to leave plenty of time to do some questions and answers. Also, again, that QR code is if you want to connect with me and talk about any of this, please use that. So how do you produce good organic video? What, you know, how do you get on there? If you've got this, and I do believe this is a golden opportunity for people who know how to use it. When you, like for me, when I, my organic video could be something like me getting on, I might be talking about my business, but I also might just be talking about as a woman of my age, like I think about in the mornings, my purpose in life, something like that. That connects me to my customer. It builds a relationship. But it's not that easy to do if you haven't done it all your life. So here are four or five tips that I'm going to give you. First of all, organic video these days, forget, uh, number one, forget all of the, hey guys, how you doing? All that. The new research shows that you have at most three seconds to grab the viewer's attention. Three seconds. So you want to get right into it, whatever it is you're going to say. For instance, you know, no more hi guys, how are you today, all that. They'll just scroll right past you. It could be something like, this blew me away. Okay, if that's the first thing I hear out of your mouth, I'm I'm intrigued. I'm going to I'm going to want to know, you know, what it is that blew you away. So get right to it. Forget all the hellos, forget all the introducing yourself. You don't need to do any of that. Three seconds is the average right now that you have to grab the person's attention who's watching. So this, this blew me away. Or have you ever thought about this? People will, they'll go, what is she going to ask? You know, or put a poll up or something like that while you're talking. But anyway, get right to it. That's my number one tip. Number two. Focus on your customer's need, not what you have to sell. Now, I know you're all entrepreneurs and you know this backwards and forwards. That's the only way you're still in business. But when you get on video, there's a tendency to get kind of derailed and start thinking about you, you, you kind of lose that sales ability sometimes. And you're kind of thinking about, well, I need to explain this. And I, you get wrapped up in the process. Use the same principle you use every day in your business. Focus on what your customer needs, not what you have to sell. So for instance, again, at the beginning of your video, that might look something like this. Let's say you own a restaurant or a, a place where people, a bakery or, or whatever. Instead of you're standing, in, you're going to do your organic video and you're standing in front of your bakery. And instead of saying, this, hi, I'm Louise and this is my bakery. You might say, instead of that, which would be about your product, focus on the need. You might say, do you want a good plate? How would you like to pick up something great for dinner tonight? Again, that's going to pull me in. So the second point is focus on your customer's need at the beginning, at the top of that organic video, instead of talking about your product, put their need first. I really give this a lot of thought when I do my videos. Sometimes, um, and I'm going to talk about captions and uh, titles next because they do work, but I will spend a long time thinking about what kind of a caption is going to pop up first or what kind of a title I want to put on that video. And you got to put it in the middle of the screens because so they see it. Because the research also shows that those thumbnails that you see when you're scrolling through, you know, the thumbnail is just the whatever you see on your feed. That has a huge is a huge indicator of whether people will actually stop and watch the video. So whatever they see on the screen, the words, the title of the video. So for instance, like I said earlier, I think I used this one time. This blew me away. That was my title that I put across the, the top of my video so that people would stop and look at it. And they did. <laughs> you know, so anyway, so number three is captions and titles on your video. TikTok, I don't know if you've ever had this experience. I have several times at work when I was watching TikTok when I wasn't supposed to be and it blares out. But regardless of TikTok, most people 
most of the time watch social media silently. They don't listen to the sound. So they're watching you, but they may just be reading the words that you're saying. So those titles and those captions, what you say, what you put in your title is really, really important. Um, again, you've got just a couple of seconds. So right off the top, you may want to put that caption. If it says, this blew me away, you're saying that people may not hear you say it, but they'll see you say it. So captions and um, titles across your video are important. Number four is this. We're talking about how to connect authentically with a customer. Get personal. Get personal. People like to hear your story. As I said, some of the most watched videos that I post are about... I'll, I, I posted one, oh, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago. And I was talking about, I, I was saying, you know, I said, I did the dumbest thing this morning. And then I told a story about something that I had, I had done, which was really stupid. And people responded, they said, I've done that too. I've done that same thing. So get personal. Don't be afraid to share your life. Again, this, this moment in digital time, this moment in the business world is the moment for you to make connections with people, people who you didn't know. I mean, I have people following me on TikTok, which is content driven. I have people following me on TikTok. I never saw them before. I don't know who they are, but they were intrigued by what I was saying. But get personal. Talk about challenges that you're facing in your life. Talk about challenges you're facing in your business, which leads me to another part of getting personal. And that is the new research shows that People are a little bit bored, and I think it's because there's so many ads on social now. People are a little bit bored with products. What they are interested in is how you built your business, how you built it, because how you built it, they can learn from some, they can learn something from that, and they can that give it's that it's that payoff for the viewer. They can learn from you and learn how you did it and maybe how they can too. So when you're talking about personal things, share some of your struggles that you've had in your business, share struggles, share triumphs. But again, it's viewer, it's information that's gonna help the viewer, but the research shows that they're very interested at this point in how did she do it? How did she build that business? What were her secrets? What were her three top tips? for building your successful business. What would you, no, that's one thing I ask people on TV a lot of time when I have entrepreneurs on. I'm like, for women watching, what would you tell them about how to build a business? Because that's the viewer payoff. So you're doing the same thing. Um, number five is look, I just covered that, is talking about how you built your business. And then I guess the last thing I'm gonna wrap up there's just so much I could talk about here, but in this section that we're talking about, about just the mechanics of doing it. Um, the thing about talking to a camera is that a lot of times when we, when people, what I coach my clients on is that when you're talking to a camera on social media, when you're talking to Instagram or when you're talking to Facebook on a camera, you have to keep in mind that you are only talking to one other person on the, you're not talking to, this is a group tonight, this is different. But when you're doing a video for social media, the person who watches that video is gonna be just one person, maybe sitting, having coffee or whatever. Using a camera is a very intimate form of communication. So what, and it's the same, it's the exact same thing as being on TV, because when I'm on TV, I'm not talking to a huge, yes, it's, you know, thousands and thousands of people, but it's actually just one person I'm talking to sitting in her kitchen, having a cup of coffee in the morning, watching the TV. And so I, and this is a trick I used to do a lot. And I still do sometimes I would think of a friend of mine who I just get in my head, a friend who I'm telling a story to. And I would have in my head, I'm just telling my friend the story because that is really all communicating with a camera is. It's an one-to-one -one 
It's not like you're in front of a big audience. It's just one-to-one. So when I say organic, personal, authentic, one-to-one, that's the type of talking to the camera that really works. Okay, those are some of the mechanics. Um, I think we need to go to the next slide. Um, okay, there's some practical things that work in terms of going, I'm, I should put on my glasses so I can, yes, we're on the same slide. Okay, so um, practical things when you're recording videos. Keep your camera like right now, I hope I'm right, my computer, I'm at eye level, okay? I interview a lot of people sometimes on TV, on Zooms or stuff like that. Um, and I'm just using Zoom as an example where they'll have the, you know, the computer down low and I'm seeing the ceiling and I'm like, raise your computer up. But when you're, you're your best angle to shoot videos, because people are like, how is your, you know, because I mean, if you, I, I've been on TV for 40 years, okay? So I'm not 20. And people will ask me, how do you look good on? And I'm like, mm, I know all the tricks. So keep your camera at eye level when you're shooting a video. Always have your camera at eye level. That's one thing. And the second thing, and I don't know if I put this second or not on the, on the I, okay, I'll get to the, the other thing in a minute, but keep your camera at eye level, okay? Don't be shooting the ceiling and don't be looking. I it, It's not the problem with looking um, when you have your camera too high, I know it looks great because it makes your body look smaller, but it it gives the um, it gives the impression that you're not important because you do look diminutive. So just keep that camera at eye level. The second thing is this, and um, you can go look at this stuff after we finish tonight. Um, that'd be great. Body language. I don't know how much you've looked at body language, but this is something I work with clients on and it will help you in every aspect of your life. Um, if there's a TED talk, I always have people watch. It was done by a Harvard researcher. Her name is Amy Cuddy, C-U-D-D-Y. It was done like 10, 12 years ago, but it's still kind of like the Bible for body language. And what it's about is owning your space. So in other words, if you're kind of like, and people don't realize it until they become aware of it, but your body language conveys so much about whether you are have something valuable to say or not. You can have the best thing on earth to say, but if your body looks like you're reticent or hesitant, people won't pay attention to it. And in an age when we're, you know, we have three seconds to capture their attention. Body language is really important. I remember one time I was coaching, um, this was, uh, it was an athletic association. And um, so I had to go to a, an event at, uh, it was the Omni downtown Dallas. And they were up on the stage. There were five of the best football coaches in Texas. They were all sitting up there. And it was fascinating to see the reaction from the crowd and look at their body language. The coach from uh, Rice, he was kind of sitting on the edge of his chair and he was super comfortable. People loved him. I'm not gonna tell you who the other coach was, but there was another coach who I think was a very nice man and who was uh, a successful coach. But I think he was nervous about being on camera and his body language was very closed. He sat kind of still with his legs together. He didn't get the warmth from the audience that the guy who was using that body language, just kind of owning his own space. So um, Amy Cuddy, uh, it's TED Talk, body language, Amy Cuddy, you'll find it. It's really interesting. So body language is important. And the third, so you've got your camera angle, you've got your body language, and you've got your lighting. <laughs> I can't tell you how important lighting is. And I do a whole, I do a whole program helping people with how to how to how to know good lighting, how to do good lighting. It doesn't have to be complicated, but um, I'll give you an example. I, I'll, I'll tell you a couple of things. Don't ever shoot a video in a department store with overhead lights. No, just don't do it. <laughs> You'll hate it. I promise. So um, some of, don't do that. Do always like right now. This isn't the best lighting on earth, but it's good enough for zoom and it's, I've got, you know, a nice big 
I've got a large ring light, not a small one. I have a large ring light in front of me because it gives a more general light all over me. I also always get a ring light that has a uh, that has the filter where you can turn it warmer or cooler. I always turn it warmer because it just gives a more warm golden glow. If you're out and you're doing something, or if you're if you're trying to just shoot with natural light, one of the biggest mistakes I see people make. This happened to me the other day with a bunch of TV people. I went to, um, so I went to, um, God rest her soul, Bobby Wygant, her uh, funeral was last week. So there were a lot of TV people there and people wanted to take pictures with everybody. And everybody was like, oh, here, come over by this window. Let's take, and I'm like, no, <laughs> you don't want to be with the window in back of you because you're going to be all dark and the window is going to be light. No, but what you do want, and this is the point I want to get across to you, you do want whenever you're in that situation, use that beautiful natural light that's coming in. So it doesn't matter if you have the ugliest hallway in the world in your background, if that natural light is coming on and making you glow. So anyway, lighting is really, really important. As I said, um, I, I, I have a whole program for lighting that I help people with. Um, but anyway, I, I think one of the things to, as I wrap up this part, cause I do want to leave time for questions. Um, one of the things about lighting and this whole thing that I just told you about having a ring light and all that is I've got a saying in my company where process drives productivity. Here's what I mean. If I've got to come in every single time and I'm dedicated, I'm going to start doing more video for social media. I'm going to do it. But if every time I do it, I've got to set up a new ring light. I've got to go get this. I've got to go get an extension cord. I'm much less likely to do it. Process drives productivity. So one thing that I would ask you to take away from this is if you've got a corner somewhere where you can just get it set up, and you've got a nice light and um, it's a place where all you gotta do is pop your camera on your ring light or whatever, you're much more likely to do the necessary posting because you've got to post these things on a regular basis. So I, I, I don't know if I mentioned I'm involved with a new company right now. And one of the things that we're helping clients with is this, it can be overwhelming to get everything posted we're using a fabulous system where I coach people on all the kind of stuff that I'm coaching because AI I can't do that yet, but I coach people. I help, I help clients learn how to deliver their, their message on camera, their brand message. I learn all the things we're talking about and much more, but then all the technical stuff of getting all that video uploaded, of creating reels, of all that. That's all done by AI. It is so efficient. It is so incredibly, it's cost efficient. It's time efficient. It's a very good deal for the customer. I'm really excited about it. I, I'm, I've learned a lot about AI in the last few months. So um, anyway, that's just parenthetically. Okay. Um, so some of the best practices for looking good on video, smile. I know it's hard to remember. Yeah, next slide. I'm sorry. Um, smile. I know it's hard to remember, but and and I mean, if you're talking about something tragic, you don't want to smile. But I will tell you that in general, even if you're talking about something like if you look at my face right now, I'm explaining something to you. Now, I'm not talking about a tragedy, obviously, but I'm explaining something to you. I've got just a slight smile on my face. I'm going to switch it over and I'm going to do this. So I'm talking to you right now and I've got no smile on my face. The difference is dramatic. So just remember, you don't have to grin or anything like that, but just that your eyes sparkle. You just, you come to life when you smile. So I have a little bit of a smile when you're talking. Um, colors. This is something I teach people, but if you have an opportunity and I actually have someone I work with on this, I don't do, I, I've had my colors done best thing I ever did. This red, this is one of my colors. Um, but I, and I have someone I work with, I would love to do it. Actually. I just don't have time. I, I love color, but if you don't know your colors, I think it's a really smart idea to spend the time 
learning them because again, on camera, and if you're got three seconds, you want to pop and you want to look your best. And I'm going to tell you for us who are a little bit older in the audience, I love neutrals as much as anybody else, but neutrals, as we lose color, when we age, neutrals are really not our best friend. So um, anyway, I, again, message me and I'll give you some information, but get your colors done. If you haven't done it, it's really worth it. Third, put your iPhone to work. Anytime you're going to be on camera, I, before I buy something, I take a picture of it. And then I look at the picture because I'm going to tell you something. There are things that I have thought were really cute when I went to the store to buy them. And when I took the picture and looked at me in it, I was like, mm, no, that's not going to work. <laughs> things look entirely different on camera than they do in person. It, I don't know why, but they do. So things that you're going to be wearing for your videos or stuff like that, take a picture of yourself in it first and decide, do I want to wear this? Because you want to feel confident when you're on camera. Okay, next slide. Um, I do want to mention one thing because this is something else I teach. Um, so I've talked about organic video and how important it is in building your brand. And I do believe this is a golden opportunity right now to use it if you know how to do it. Um, the other place that I think is going to be valuable is getting yourself on TV, uh, like on Good Morning Texas or something like that. So, and we have people who pay, but we also have content that, you know, people, we just, we have to have good content. And um, there are ways to, if you're smart, to get on, you know, TV, if you, not, not if you're smart, that was the wrong word to use. You have to be familiar with the system. I coach clients on that, on how to do it. But I'm going to give you a couple, because here's the deal. People, when they watch TV, they, we're, we have to vet people who come on TV. We can't just put anybody on and let them say anything because we're government regulated. We're regulated by the FCC. People know that. So if you go on TV and then you post that video that you were on TV on your social media, it gives you a lot of credibility. It's a good bit because we're not, we're not gonna have somebody who's just like AI on TV, if you get what I mean. So right now is a great time to see if you can get yourself on TV, on the news or on Good Morning Texas or something like that. Again, this is something I help people do, but um, I'm gonna give you a couple of tips, a couple of, uh, couple of tips. One, you gotta be on social because this is where we get our, um, this is most of like when we sit in the meetings in the morning and say, you know, what would be a good story? What would be a good story? Most of us are going through our Instagram feed or going through our Facebook feed. So you got to be on social. You've got to have a good social presence. That's one of the best ways to get on TV, okay, is to have a good social presence. So that's number one. And I'm going to end here in like two minutes so I can take your questions. Number two is emails are the best way to contact somebody. And you can usually get our emails on any website, like the WFA website, you would find my email. Email is a good way to contact. But I get pitches all the time from people who are like, I'm a lawyer. If you ever need a lawyer to talk about anything, please keep my, keep my uh, information. Or I'm a doctor. That's not a good way to pitch because... I have so many things I'm going through that I may save it. I may not. You know how that is. You're, you're an entrepreneur. You know, a much better way to pitch is, let's say you're a physical therapist, okay? Instead of writing me an email and saying, hey, I'm a physical therapist, if you ever, because we do sometimes need a physical therapist to talk about a certain thing, I, but a much better way to do it is, I'm a physical therapist and I've no pitch a story, not yourself. I'm a physical therapist and I've noticed since school has started that I've been getting a lot of children coming in with back pain because of the heavy backpacks they're carrying. You just gave me a story. I'll use you in the story, but you pitched the story instead of yourself. And that is a successful pitch. Um, next slide. I think we're about to wrap up. I think what I want to, what I want to leave you with is just that we are entering a time of huge change 
in communications. Um, the New York Times has a has a lawsuit right now trying to protect a lot of the information that is being used. I mean, if you think about it, AI scrubs the web. Okay, that's the way it works. It scrubs everything that's out there. Where did all that information come from? It came from reporters from the New York Times or reporters here and there. I think that the donkeys out of the the horses out of the barn or whatever you want to say. I, I think that we're entering a time where there's going to be so much information out there and people aren't going to know where it came from. They're not going to know what the source is that, as I said, you on camera talking about your business, talking about your product, talking about your personal journey, how you built your business, how you got where you are. I think that's going to be the best sales tool going for quite a while to come. So with that, um, I'm going to open it up to, um, I'd like to open it up to questions, I guess, and see um, who wants to, does anybody have anything in specific? That I, how do you want to do this, Donna Lisa? I don't know. How do you want um, to do it? Tracy was monitoring the chat. So she's got a couple of questions and then we'll do another drive by and see if we've got more questions. Right. And as I said, if you have specific questions, use that QR code, but go ahead, Tracy. Let me unmute there for you. So we had a couple of them in there. Um, uh, Demetra on Facebook wanted to know what AI tool does video editing? Oh, gosh, there are a couple. Um, there is one. Uh, let me think of the name of it. Um, well, Canva, you know, Canva does a lot of video editing. Um Canva would be a good one. Um, I'm trying to think of not, it's not Riverside. Um, you know what, Tracy, put that question, put put the, um, hit the QR code. I'm going to need to look up a couple of names for you because I've been so immersed in so many names of companies over the last couple of months that I can't recall. I can't, I can't come to mind right now about a specific video editing AI system, but they are, they are out there and it's pretty amazing what they can do. It's pretty amazing. Jane, your audience is coming in clutch for you and throwing some stuff in the chat, like CapCut, InShot, uh, GetMunch.com. Um, yeah, so they're but... helping you out. <laughs> All right, good. I'm glad. CapCut, I mean, obviously, you know, is a popular one. It's just that I, I think one one of the things that's happening right now, like, okay, the system I was talking about, and maybe I was ahead of myself on this, because one of the things that's happening right now is if I take, and this is incredible to me, but if I take one, one of the ways we're doing um, that, I, I mentioned that I'm in a, a new sort of venture with someone. And one of the things we do is I get you, you're a client and you're, you're my, um, I get you on, it's not Zoom, but it's like a fancy Zoom, okay? And I think it's called Riverside. It's like a fancy Zoom. So we get on and I coach you a little bit and then I interview you. I'm, I'm good at asking questions that get people to say good things. I know how to get the good sound bites, all that kind of stuff. So I interview you for say 30 or 45 minutes. And then at the end of that, so we've got an hour's worth of video of you just talking about stuff, okay? You're just talking about different things about your life, your business, whatever. We feed that to this AI system separately. So you got an hour of video, okay? Then we take, um, like, I might ask you, send me some video, a, a restaurant. Let's say you own a restaurant. I like food, you can tell. Um so send me some, send me some iPhone video, just of your restaurant, of your food, blah, blah, blah. So you send me some of that. The AI system that we use takes that with no, nothing else done and almost instantaneously cuts it into six, eight, 10 reels. It's amazing. I mean, so cap cut and things like that, you know, I mean, I, you know, I mean, I, I, I use a lot of things like that right now on social, but this is like whole next generation. You just feed, you just feed the hours worth of tape and AI picks out the best bites. It picks out the stuff to use. It's, 
it's mind boggling. So, and I, I can't think of the name of that system. I, there's two or three we're using. So, and somebody else, question? Yes, there um, one that has been asked more than once. What, how do you recommend they find their color palette? <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I've, I, I've got, um, I wanna, uh, let me look her up. I don't, I don't want, I don't want to send her. She's a friend of mine. I've talked to her extensively because I actually thought about doing this. Um, her name is, and I'm just gonna, if I can find her real quick here. Uh, she, I, I had my colors done by a company called Color Me Beautiful. That was the original in the eighties. Everybody used Color Me Beautiful. They've since kind of gone off because I did call them. They're in England, and I did call them because I was very serious about doing it. Um, but they kind of gone off in a little bit direction that I'm not sure about. So now that's been replaced by what's called House of Color. Okay. And I think her name, I think her, I've got her info here. Meredith, I believe is her name. You know what? Okay. Let me see. Meredith. I'll call her and, uh, no House of Color. Let me try that. While I'm looking up House of Color, go ahead with another question. Okay. Let's see, I lost everything for a minute. Um, Donna Lisa, was there one more that I had in that? Okay. I've her name is Meredith, M-E-R-I-D-E-T-H, Waltman, W-A-L-T-M-A-N. I'm sure you can Google her. I, I'm, I'm not going to give you her phone number. I don't think that'd be a good idea. But it's House of Color, Meredith Waltman. And I'm sure if you Google it, you'll find her. She's good. I saw what she did. I liked what she did. One of the things I liked is we were talking about doing a segment for Good Morning Texas. And she said, I can't do it on TV. She said, I can't. And she said I've got to work directly with the person. And I respected that because I've had it done. And she was telling the truth. It's something you've got to do in person. So anyway, Meredith Waltman, if you call her or if you get a hold of her, tell her I sent you. Okay. I got to work out a deal with that girl. Okay. Somebody else? Um, mine came back up. So um, this has been asked and I think you answered it, but uh, somebody is, wants to know how long should be the videos. How long should the videos be? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, two schools of thought on that right now. I still think that 60 seconds is your best video. I, 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 TikTok has gone now to promoting longer videos, like 10 minutes or whatever. But just use your common sense. I mean, I might do a mix if I were you, you know, once a week, maybe I would do a longer form video that is 10 minutes of you talking about something. But if you think about how busy people's lives are, 60 seconds, I think is ideal because the other thing is I get real frustrated sometimes if, if my video is a minute and 52 seconds and I can't put it as real on Instagram. It's like, really? You know, I just think a minute because then you can also stick it on X, Twitter. You know, I mean, it'll take up to a minute. So I try to keep most of mine at 60 seconds. Is there a recommendation for etiquette, posture, sitting, body language? Um... I'm not sure what you mean by etiquette. Um, the whole body that I, I I think the thing with social is it's all very natural now. I mean, the more natural or and more natural you are, the better you are. But when I talk about body language, I'm just talking about being in command of your space. I'm talking about like me, if I'm standing here, let me stand up. If I'm standing here and I'm talking to you, I want to be relaxed. I want to be talking to you like this, da, 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 as opposed to standing here with my hands at my side, it gives an entirely different impression. When I'm relaxed, when I'm talking, owning my space, that's why you need to watch that video. It's fascinating. Uh, but it, and it, she talks about it, like I said, she's a Harvard researcher, she's really smart, but she talks about how it's natural. She said like animals in nature, when they're out running, you'll see them, you know, like this gliding ahead or whatever, you know, when they're powerful, it gives that, so it's the body language video is well worth watching, but what I'm talking about has to do with owning your space and giving you, because of that, on video that comes across as being confident, 
and people want to learn from confident people. Any more questions? Yep, we had one from Facebook, um, Cooking with Carmen. She said, and I think we had another question in the chat about this. When somebody is sending you information or a story and you know pitching their idea, um, who do you target in that email? So uh, you're talking about trying trying to get on TV? Yes, ma'am. So what you've got to, okay. So a couple steps. First of all, you've got to figure out what is my, what, what is my, I mean, do I have a, a dog grooming business that would be good for Good Morning Texas? Or am I trying to get on the news because I think there's a real problem with um, backpacks that are too heavy for kids? So first of all, you got to think about, is this a news thing or is this a lifestyle entertainment thing? And then what you want to do is you want to go to the station's website, okay? And all the reporters are listed there. You want to send it personally to figure out, look in there and, and like, uh, you know, it'll say, I'm Good Morning Texas. So if you've got a lighter story, you're going to send it to me, to my email. You want to send it to the reporter who you think is going to be interested in the story. You don't want to blanket the newsroom with it because honestly, then everybody comes in with the same story and nobody wants to pitch it because it's like, well, she sent it to everybody. You know, you want to come in with your own special story. So send it to maybe two or three reporters or two or three names. Um, your subject line is super important. Because if think about it for a minute, when I'm sitting there and I'm going through my computer during the day, I probably get 50 story pitches every day. So I don't have time, honestly, to go through every one of them. So if the subject line says, I've got a great story for you. If it says, um, I'm trying to think, uh, top or, or uh, uh, voted best restaurant. I might look at that because I'm like, well, what was voted best restaurant? That might be good for our viewers or something like that. So your subject line is super important. You want to write it to a person. Subject line is super important. And then don't put a million details in it, but do just make it short and put in your bullet points. And if you have any videos or any pictures that illustrate your product or your business, put that in there too, because you know it's easier for us to look at the video and say, oh, that'd make a good story. So that's, again, if you want to know more, you know, if you're interested in coaching on that, hit the hit the QR code and I'm happy to help you with that. Um, once you get on TV, how do you leverage that to get more TV interviews? Okay, so I, I, I taught a lot of clients on this subject. Um, I thought y'all would be more interested in social um, so there's a whole strategy toward leveraging that to get more TV interviews. Um, one of the best people I know is Derek Kinney, who does, who's, he's, he's our financial guy. It starts with getting that first interview. And when you get that first interview, you want to perform well. When you get that first interview, that means you want to get to your point quickly on your questions. You want to, uh, if you're on Good Morning Texas, you and they ask you to bring food because you got a restaurant, you want to bring good food and all that. Okay, well, so let's say you do a good job on that first one. Well, that you've already got a leg up because we're always looking for regulars. So that's going to, you know, we may call you again for something, but you want to write us back in four to six weeks and say, Hey, I've got another story idea. If you did a good job on your first one, then we might do it on the second one. Then you want to post what I said. That video that you did for TV, you want to post that on your social media because that's advertising. I was on TV. And then other people will see that. And they go, well, she's already been. And you also, like what I tell, what I tell clients to do is when you've been on Good Morning Texas and you've been on Fox 4 or something like that, you need to put that in your um, bio on your social. That needs to go as seen on Good Morning Texas, Fox 4, that kind of thing. And it snowballs. It builds on itself. I, again, I um, that's something that I coach. I can help you with if you're seriously interested in it. Um, I can, I 
I that's I've done that for years and years and years. The social is just something that um, I've focused on more recently. How many video posts should you expect to produce in a week? Oh. <laughs> oh. It's exhausting. You honestly need to try to post once a day. You need to do a news feed post once a day. You need to do, if you can, three or four or five stories a day. And this is if you really want to try to use social to grow your business. Um, that's one of the reasons that I love the technique that we're using of just interviewing you, getting an hour's worth and spitting out six or eight reels because you've got them then. Um, but like, here's an example of somebody I saw today who I, I thought when she did it, I thought that's smart. Uh, Hannah, who used to be my co-host on Good Morning Texas, she was sitting at her desk and she said, every day I'm going to bring you a good news story, something that's good news. It's so she's just she's found a niche where she thinks she can produce something every single day and she will develop a following by doing that for those good news stories. So again, I'll use the restaurant. You might do a cooking tip of the day or if you had a, um, a like one thing I post that I get a lot of reaction on is whenever I post anything that's like how to um, not how to make your body the most gorgeous thing on earth, but things you need to do to stay physically fit for your health. So if you, if you were a physical therapist or something like that, you might just post a tip a day. Doesn't have to be complicated, doesn't have to be elaborate, but regular posting like once a day, if you can do it, 60 second video and a couple of stories, that's really ideal. You will get the chat press. Oh, okay. All right. Any other questions before we, I think we're almost over our time limit. Um, yeah, we've got enough time for another question. Okay, we one more. One back in there asking about how much does the background matter in your video? And I think you touched on it a little. Well, but. I mean, I, I will tell you, when I tell people, and I think the same rule applies, um, when I coach people about Zooms, which I, which I also do, um, I, or, cause I coach them. If the, a lot of times now you'll be on TV via zoom. Okay. So I coach people and I always tell them your background matters. It's a free billboard. <laughs> it's a free billboard, you know? So, um, I mean, why, if I've got a donut shop, why am I going to do my videos with a blank wall behind me when I could do them in front of my signage or when I could do them, your, your background, it does matter. I mean, people, yeah, you pick up. So I always say, think smart, use everything you can and use something like if I were talking to a lawyer, I would tell the lawyer, Put a bookcase with some books in your background and maybe a couple of, you know, things where we can see you won awards. It's subliminal messages that you pick up on when you see what's in that video or in that background. So, yes, it does matter. I mean, I, I'm not I mean, if you're out, you know, I mean, I shoot videos in my car sometimes. I'm not saying every video matters, but those those ones that when you have time to plan, yes, your background does matter. This has been so fun. I hope. You muted yourself, Jane. I it said the host muted me, so I was like, "Well, that's one way to tell me it's time time to finish up." Oh well, I, if I did that, okay. I'm sorry. I'm going to put your QR code up again, really quick. They're asking for it, so yeah. And just if you want to connect with me about anything that we've asked about, just you know, do, do the QR code. It's going to send you to a site where it'll you'll uh, there's like. I, I do, I chat with people during the afternoons because I, it won't let you book anything in the morning because I, I'm filled up, but yeah, do the QR code and, you know, we might be on the phone for five minutes. We might be on the phone for 20 minutes, but, um, I would love to answer your questions. And, um, again, I'm just saying video is not easy, but I really do believe, and if you think about it, if you think about everything that's going on in the world of communications right now, I really do believe this is the opportunity to, I mean, think about it. 
it's the only thing you're going to have that you know is real. Seriously, I mean, it's kind of scary, to be honest with you, but I just try, I try to take opportunities where they are. And it's the only thing we're going to know is real is when somebody is talking to us on camera. So it's like I said, I didn't open up the Oprah email the other day because I was like, eh, it's probably just AI. So, anyway. Darn, hopefully it really wasn't Oprah. <laughs> but, no, no, no. What it was, I'm on her because I get a lot of, I subscribe to a lot of stuff just so I can keep up with things. But it was, it was her email that goes out to all her subscribers. Yeah. And used to, I would have opened it because I would have thought, well, let's see what Oprah has to say. But now I'm kind of like, you know what? I bet that whole email was just written by AI. It makes it less valuable. It makes you on camera more valuable. So yeah. I hope that's been helpful. I hope that, I hope that, that, I hope it, um, like I said, I'm an, I'm an entrepreneur. I know it's hard. I know it's tough. Um, um, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm in business too. And so maybe that helped you some, I hope so. Oh, we see a lot of, um, very good replies and thank you. Great information. Right. I also found the link to the Ted talk and I put that in the chat okay. as well as your friend. I put her website in there as well. Oh, you're great. Good, good. So Hey, listen, that TED Talk, that TED Talk is like 10, 15 years old, something like that. But it's really worth listening to. Her story is interesting anyway. It's 20 minutes. It's like a 20 minute TED Talk. But it's yeah, really, it, it's, it's good stuff. Yeah, it looks like it would be great. So I figure I'm going to watch it too. So okay. I think we probably all will. So thank you so much. This has been so great. Um, everyone, and I have put this in the chat multiple times. We will send out the video in the chat and all that information um, tomorrow. So everybody will have that if they want to go back and look right. at it again. Right. Um, Follow me on Instagram. If you're yeah. not following me, I'm Jane <laughs> Gary on Instagram. Follow me on Instagram. I'm going, I, I'm going to, I'll show the clothes I'm wearing this weekend for LA in the rain. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. I hope you have a wonderful weekend, thank even you. in the rain. Thank you. <laughs> everybody have a great weekend. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Bye-bye.